Listen. Remember how you would use your fingers as placeholders when you were reading those choose-your-own-adventure books? Looking like a Captain Underpants flip rama Well, Netflix has joined the server and is serving up their 21st century concept of this. And what better way to playtest it than with Black Mirror, a show we've gotten mad requests for. Since most of us believe free will is a thing, I've divided this video into three main parts, all timestamps, so you can pretty much choose your own adventure with this or experience the whole thing. Let me explain. So what's always been great about Black Mirror is how creepy and futuristic the episodes feel, yet it also seems like they can occur tomorrow. Like I'm pretty sure most of us have played a Telltale game. R.I.P. Telltale games. Heavy Rain, Life is Strange, where you're able to choose certain things that alter the path your character follows. I personally love those games, even though some people consider them movies, but now we actually got one that is a movie. This is separate from the series tab for Black Mirror on Netflix because it has to generate multiple windows while you're making decisions, but I think it's crazy to see how they shot this thing, because if you don't pick up your remote at all, there's actually an auto-generated path that the movie will take that totals up to an hour and a half, but if you do spend the time figuring out where each different decision takes you, then the movie totals up to 5 hours and 12 minutes. Even crazier than that was that this was a 170 page Page script, which was shot in 37 days, but was shot linearly according to the director, meaning that they didn't shoot every single option while they were on that one set. They would start from the beginning for each one so it would flow better for the actor when they were making that decision. That's wild. Now Netflix has done cool things on the platform in the past, like having the D from Bojack Horseman go missing since the D in the show was stolen and you end up finding it somewhere else on the app. They've also done interactive stuff before with the kids shows where they're a little bit more simpler, not as bloody, but you were able to get puss in his boots. But what I'm excited for is to see if Black Mirror takes their previous scrapped ideas and puts them into season five, depending on the reception of Bandersnatch. Creators Charlie Brooker and Annabelle Jones wanted alternative endings for season two's White Bear, which is probably why it's referenced in this specific story, but the one that would have flipped people out was their scrapped idea for season three's playtest. You know, the one where Wyatt Russell takes a job at a video game company before things get really trippy. What would have been trippier is their idea of having a different ending play without notice if you rewatched it a second time which would have caused people to probably start questioning their reality. I love how Netflix created its own program to keep up with the different pathways that they were creating for this specific episode, how they tested the attention span of a viewer and knew that they had to put in a choice every three to five minutes in order for the viewer's remote to not get stuck in the couch. But the scariest part is hearing the creator himself admit that even he has trouble finding some of the pathways in the episode, almost building this creepy feeling of, what if it starts creating its own? What if the creators of the show rewatch it back one day and they start seeing things they didn't even shoot? Now, according to Netflix themselves, there are five main endings, and I suppose what you would consider an after credit scene. A lot of people claim that they know the definitive ending, but, you know, the credits pop up once you've watched all five, and they can vary, so the final, final one, it's up to you but this one is the best. Starting out from the beginning, we got our boy from Dunkirk having to make really serious decisions like, You decide what you want for your breakfast. Exhilarating. What is cool is that even though these seem like minuscule decisions, they do a good job at incorporating them throughout your past. Like if you played that game until dawn where the therapist would ask you if you were scared of one thing or another and you're like, bruh, I'm not gonna fall for this. So depending on what cereal you choose, you'll end up seeing a commercial for it later. Whichever album or song you choose ends up being the score that plays in the background of your scenes. Yeah, we're in the future. The year is 1984, hence the now two tape, and our dude Stefan is about to pitch his game Bandersnatch to this video game company. He meets Will Poulter, who I've seen people confuse with Jesse Plemons, who was in season four of Black Mirror, but nah, Plemons tends to play way creepier roles. Oh, you two enjoy each other. It's often we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. I think that's it. Okay, bye-bye. Colin here is a famous game creator who sits down to look at Stefan's new game, Bandersnatch. And the meaning of Bandersnatch can vary to some people, I suppose. It originally comes from Lewis Carroll, who I would say is referenced a lot throughout this episode. You know, he did do Alice in Wonderland, and Stefan goes on his own trip. He's looking for his white rabbit. Colin's wife looks like the Mad Hatter. And I mean, he goes through his own looking glass. It's also a nod to the real game named Bandersnatch that never came out because the company went bankrupt in 1984. 
and 1984 is exactly the time this story takes place. But for all I know, Brooker seems to be a big video game nerd, so it could really just be a Final Fantasy nod. He presents the game, which is based on the book he grew up reading within the show, called Bandersnatch, and where you have to make decisions that lead your character to certain points. And it's gonna get even more meta. The big villain in the game is this demon named Pax, which is known as being the Thief of Destiny. And right away, you get the first big choice to either work with the company or do it yourself. So come on, what's your answer? Yes. The next game under our Christmas spotlight is Bandersnatch. And your verdict? No stars out of five. Terrible. So, saying yes pretty much ends everything as the game is called Sloppy and gets panned. You can then choose to end the movie right there or go back and pick a different path of actually working it on your own, which is able to help Stefan concentrate more on the game and have enough time to go to therapy. Would you like to talk about what happened with your mother? Uh, no. nah. You really might learn something new. So I'll ask again. Would you like to talk about what happened with your mother? Bruh, I said no. Stefan then goes to the store where you pick up this album, but then he buys his book without your permission. We get to learn a little bit more about the dude who wrote the book Bandersnatch, and uh, turns out he was crazy. This man was so invested in keeping up with all the paths and decisions that he was creating for his book that he went so crazy off of free will and predestination and actually seeing the Pax monster that he thought nothing mattered and decided to just kill his wife. This man was also preaching about mind control. It's funny because I always think about Ashton Kutcher and how he changed his diet to be more like Steve Jobs when he was filming the movie, and that change of diet actually caused him to start getting pancreatic problems. It's crazy. You get the next major choice that appears a couple of times, and that's deciding to either spill the tea and destroy the computer, thus ending the story, but also Stefan's hopes and dreams, or yelling at your dad which some of us aren't as privileged to do. If you yell at him, the movie continues and you make your next major choice. That's either following Colin or going to therapy. If you follow Colin, you end up going to this place where you drop acid with the Pex demon on it. And he starts spewing about alternate realities and how he's practically aware that he's a TV character that has different storylines. And you kind of notice that he starts recognizing Stefan the second time around. We've met before. No. My favorite part in the whole movie is this bit where he starts ranting about Pac-Man and how he actually stands for program and control. The whole thing's a metaphor. He thinks he's got free will, but really he's trapped in a maze, in a system. All he can do is consume. He's pursued by demons that are probably just in his own head. And even if he does manage to escape by slipping out one side of the maze, what happens? He comes right back in the other side. Well, damn. As drugs and Black Mirror usually do, they get so worked up about everything that they start questioning reality and if they're in a simulation, and they decide to jump off a balcony. Obviously, if you make Stefan do it, he dies and the movie's over. If Colin does it, my man just splats and you wake up in the car ready to go to therapy again. You feel like you're not making these decisions. I feel like I'm not guiding them, like someone else is. I'm doing this for us, Stefan. You then have to decide to medicate yourself, but, you know, I saw what happened the last time a Timothy Chalamet dude got addicted to drugs, so nope. If you do take them, you get two stars in the game, movie ends. But if you don't take them and you flush them, you end up back in therapy where you finally decided to talk about Stefan's mama, and it's depressing. It turns out that his mom died when he was a kid. She was running late because the dad had hit Stefan's bunny because he thought it made him a sissy, and that caused her to catch the later train, which ended up in a wreck killing her. You then have another choice to smash her throat tea, and this little hoe does none? Who's doing this to me? I know there's someone there. Uh... What the fuck is Netflix? I guess I'll explain the show to the show? You then get the option to tell him you're watching him on Netflix and to explain it to him and Boy, did you come to the right dude, my man. He decides to snitch to the therapist that we're watching him on Netflix, and she calls them both out because she believes that they're not entertaining enough for someone to sit home and watch them on TV. And this turns into an action film. Now, one, if you choose to fight her, you end up getting medicated and the movie is over. But if you try to jump out the window, you get what I consider to be the best ending of them all, where it becomes this super meta filming on set for Black Mirror, where he's being called by his actor's name, but he still thinks he's the character of Stefan. You're not scripted to jump out, see, Mike? It's the fight scene now. Uh, Stefan. Uh? Easily the best. If we rewind a little bit back though, we make our way to the more depressing, I would say, scenes that you need to brace yourself for. There's one where you go into a secret room that the dad's been hiding where you get a bunch of outcomes. You put in the wrong password and you either get eaten up or chopped up. But if you pick toy as the password, you get his old toy. 
This spawns a reality where you get to choose to actually go with the mom, and if you do, you still end up on the late train that ends up killing you both, which is really jacked up when you consider that a kid is making the decision to die with his mama instead of living with his father. But boy does it get worse. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about these last endings, saying that they get too violent, but it just sounds to me like y'all didn't put in PEC as the password. If you end up opening this file, you see that the dad has been Truman showing the boy, he's been drugging his child, putting messages into his computer, staging the mom's death with a set, bird boxing the boy, he's practically doing stuff that are more jacked up than three identical strangers. So considering that this Mr. Neutron of a dad seems to be a government pack agent who's been manipulating Stefan worse than you have, it makes this next part a little bit more bearable. You then get the option to kill the dad, and they're nice enough to even let you choose how to dispose of the body. If you bury him, you get the chance to go on a killing spree since, you know, you're bound to get caught either way, where Colin shows up and you can kill him, these other two show up and you can kill them. Either way, you're gonna end up in jail with this one, but if you decide to chop him up, you actually not only turn into Sweeney Todd, but it gives you enough time to finish the game, release it, and get a 5 out of 5 before getting pulled faster than a Kevin Spacey project, of course. Credits and play as Colin's daughter in the future takes up the mantle of creating DLC for this man who's in jail, but she's so obsessed with this game that while she's working on it, she unknowingly becomes a part of the game she's trying to recreate. Now I love easter eggs. If you guys want, I'll make more Black Mirror videos that catch up on all the crazy connections and the crazy stories, but just focusing on this episode, they take it to a complete other level. There's that secret post credits type path that I mentioned where you end up back on the train, he pulls out a bandersnatch tape this time around, it makes these weird noises that people actually translated into a QR code, they then scan that QR code, it took them to the Tuckersoft website that's hosting all of their previous games, and it actually lets you download and play Nosedive. Nosedive, of course, then starts calling back to all of the previous Black Mirror episodes, Nosedive being Season 3, Episode 1, where the elegant Jessica Bryce Chastain Howard was in. Metalhead was Season 4, Episodes 5 title, which shares the same direction as Bandersnatch. We see a mention of Hang the DJ software in this article, a safer reunion of the USS Callister fleet here, the start of 15 million merits there, a kosher shout out to the Prime Minister here, yet another callback to the most annoying episode with this thing, a shout out to San Junipero with the hospital, and of course White Bear with the symbol, and the time shifting one with playtest, where you realize if you go back to season 3, that Bandersnatch was alluded to years ago in this magazine. Safe to say, I think this episode is a combo price. The whole series is. I love how as dystopian as it gets, as tech savvy as it gets, the main themes always come back to human motives, the situations they're put in and how they react, how they have to look themselves in the mirror and face their reflections, and how the scariest black mirror of them all is already in your pocket. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Uh, Black Mirror is one of the best episodes on Netflix. I know it was a BBC show that then came over here. I don't think it suffered anything since it kept the same creators. It's just a different platform. I adore the show. Uh, I know some people think that this was repetitive and people complain because that's the point of it. Yada, yada, yada. I think it's really interesting. Be it this is the first thing that does it and then others come about. I don't think it's going to be a pandemic, if you want to call it. Like, you know, where everyone was doing werewolf and vampire movies because those were easy to make. Found footage movies. Right. Those became the craze. Those were easy to do with a, a cheap budget. Making a multi like pathway movie where you have to choose your own adventure. That takes way too much work. And I think uh, unless someone has a really good idea and the funding for it, we're not going to see a bunch of them. Maybe some cheap ones, but it takes way too much work for it to be a gimmick, in my opinion. So I really appreciated this episode. I thought it was pretty dope. I'm curious to know your thoughts, any things that I may have missed, any other outcomes. I'm pretty sure that years from now, I'm, I'm not saying my theory of it self-generating is going to be correct, but I'm sure that there's other little Easter eggs that they've put in there, things that we're going to find out later on in season five, but I'm curious to see where not only Black Mirror takes it, but where Netflix takes it, where other creators take it, and how interesting it can be. Uh, bring Telltale back if a Telltale person is watching this or someone with a lot of money forget us on youtube forget our Patreon. go give it to telltale bring them back i miss them uh let me know your favorite stuff down below in the comment section dealing with black mirror don't forget to comment like and subscribe because it's your destiny